In this video, I'd like to show you the features of a chemical equation and ultimately how to balance a chemical equation. Here's an example where we have magnesium and oxygen reacting to form magnesium oxide. Some of the basic features of a chemical equation are the reactants on the left side of the arrow and the products on the right side of the arrow. The reactants are substance or substances that get consumed and the products are substances or substances that are produced from the consumption of the reactants. The formulas of the reactants and the products are separated by an arrow. Now the word equation has a prefix which sounds like equal. And the arrow in a chemical equation is like an equal sign in a mathematical equation. But what is supposed to be equal in a chemical equation is the amount of atoms of a particular type on each side of the equation or on each side of the arrow. That is to say, in this case, the number of magnesium atoms on the left side of the arrow should be exactly the same as the number of atoms of magnesium on the right side of the arrow, and likewise for the oxygen. Initially, there are more oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation than are on the right, and that is a correct observation. The next task is to balance the chemical equation. One balances a chemical equation by choosing whole number coefficients. These coefficients are numbers in front of the formulas. Here, I chose the letters x, y, and z. The values of these numbers, x, y, and z, may or may not necessarily be the same. It all depends on what numbers you need to balance the equation. It's up to you to determine the values of x, y, and z to balance the equation. You do not alter the subscript values in the formulas. For example, the 2 and the oxygen. Do not change that number. O2, or O subscript 2, is the formula for that substance. The same thing with MgO and Mg. Do not change the subscripts in the formulas, because if you do, you alter the substance itself. One way to balance a chemical equation is to set up a table beneath the equation. In this table, I included the atoms that are shown in the chemical equation. Mg, magnesium, and O, oxygen. Now I'm going to take an accounting of the amount of magnesium and oxygen atoms on each side of the arrow, or each side of the equation. We see initially that there is one magnesium on the left side, there's two oxygen atoms on the left side, there's one magnesium atom on the right side, and one oxygen atom on the right side. Well, it appears the magnesium atoms are balanced, but the oxygens obviously are not. So we need to increase the amount of oxygen atoms on the right side. Again, we do this by putting whole number coefficients in front of the formulas. If there is no number written in front of the formula, it implies a 1. So what I'm going to do is put a 2 in front of the MgO. Now that changes the amount of magnesium atoms to 2, but it also affects the oxygen. So now we have two oxygens on the right side. So now we have two magnesium atoms on the right side, but we only have one on the left. Well, I'm going to put a 2 in front of the Mg formula to balance the magnesiums. So now we see that for each atom, we have equal numbers on both sides of the equation. 2Mg here, 2Mg on the right, 2 oxygen on the left, and 2 oxygens on the right. It's coincidental that all of these numbers are identical. In other words, two magnesium, two oxygens. Here's another example. In this equation, we start off with P on the left and two oxygen atoms on the left. On the right side, there are four phosphorus atoms and there are 10 oxygen atoms. One might ask, how do you start? Where do you start? Pick any atom you want to start with. I'm going to choose the phosphorus atoms. So I'm going to put a four in front of the P on the left side and that increases phosphorus atoms on the left to four. Now, I only have two oxygen atoms on the left, but I have 10 on the right. So I'm gonna put a five in front of the O2. And now that increases the total oxygen atom count to 10. Each O2 unit has two oxygen atoms. So two oxygens times five in front of the formula provide us with 10 oxygen atoms total on the left. So now the equation is balanced. In this equation, we begin with 
one mercury or one Hg on the left and one oxygen. One Hg on the right and two oxygens on the right. Well, the mercuries or the Hg are balanced, but the oxygens are not. We need more oxygens on the left side of the equation. So let's put a two in front of the HgO. Well, that increases our oxygen count to two, but that also affected the mercury or the Hg, and that increased it to two. Well, to solve that problem, because we have fewer on the right, we're going to put a two in front of the Hg on the right and therefore now the equation is balanced. In this last example, we start with 1K or potassium. Now we got to be careful here. This is Cl. Now this character here looks may look like an I. Perhaps you might think it's iodine, but it's actually an L. So you really need to get used to the way these fonts look. So we have potassium, chlorine, and oxygen atoms. So this one chlorine on the left and four oxygen atoms on the left side of the equation. On the right side, initially, we have one potassium, one K, one chlorine, and two oxygens on the right side of the equation. Well, we need more oxygens on the right side of the equation. So what we're going to do is put a two in front of the O2 to now increase that count to four. So now the equation is balanced. Initially, it might have seemed a little bit more complicated because you had three different types of atoms, but this one worked out to be pretty simple.